Hello everyone, I am K. Sai Baba, Assistant Professor, Department of Physics, Institute of Aeronautical Engineering, Dundigal, Hyderabad. Today our topic is Fiber Optics. We are going to discuss about the Fiber Optics. First of all, what is a Fiber Optics? Fiber Optics is a branch of physics based on transmission of light through the optical fibers which are made up of glass or plastic. These optical fibers carry the light over long distances without loss. And Sir John Tyndall was demonstrated about this optical fiber. The light can be guided along the stream of water by employing of total internal reflection. The development of fields of communication and information technology demand very easy and rapid transmission of data over long distances. Light waves cannot travel in open atmosphere as the energy gets very rapidly dissipated. Hence, some kind of guiding channel is needed just like for guiding electric current. A conducting path like a metal wire is needed. So, our light waves are cannot traveling in our open atmosphere. That's why we need one channel, one waveguide to transfer the light waves from one place to another place like our copper wire in our electric field which is carries the current. So, optical fiber provides the necessary waveguide for our light. So, what is optical fiber? Optical fiber is a long thin dielectric material which can made up of glass or plastic ion which transfer the data from one place to another place without loss. Optical fiber is a flexible transparent fiber and it is made up of glass or plastic then human height. It can function as a waveguide or light pipe to transmit light between the two ends of the fiber. All over fiber, optic cables can also work to deliver an electric current for low power electric devices. You are measuring here the bunch of optical fibers in this diagram. Optical fibers are widely used in fiber optic communications where the permit the transmission over longer distances and at higher bandwidth than the wire cables and fibers are used instead of metal wires because signals travel along them with less loss and are also immune to electromagnetic interference. So optical fibers can the transfer the data from one place to another place and fibers are also used for our illumination and our the optical fibers are playing major role in our field of communication and these are having many advantages according to these optical fiber advantages, these optical fibers playing major role in our field of communication and these are having many advantages. So these are some of the advantages we are going to see now. Higher information carrying capacity, light in weight and uh, small in size and no hazards of short circuits as in the case of metal wires. These can be used safely in explosive environment, immunity to advise adverse moisture and temperature conditions, low cost of cables per unit length compared to copper cables, no need of additional equipment to protect the against programming and voltage problems. These are the main advantages of this optical fiber. That means these are very uh, lightweight and uh, small in size. That's why we can use anywhere simply and easily. And uh, there is no short circuits in this case, and there is no internal crosstalk in these optical fibers. And we are using in any atmosphere also because of these are having independent protection of this one. That's why there is no other protection is no need to other optical fiber. Because of these advantages, the fiber optic communication is being currently utilized in our different fields like uh, medical field like military field like that in different fields we are using optical fiber because of this much of advantages are there. Now we are going to see the structure of the optical fiber. So what are the main parts in optical fiber we are going to see one by one. So the optical fiber consists of majorly three parts are there. So those three parts one is core and second one is cladding and third one is 
buffer when we are going to see the optical fiber this is having three major parts those are core cladding and buffer jacket so how they are exist in our optical fiber now we can see so first of all the inner part which is uh, inner cylindrical part which is made up of glass or plastic that is known as our core the core is surrounded by cladding one more layer is around this core that is known as our cladding and this is having black coating at outer surface that is known as our buffer jacket or outer jacket totally we are observing here three major parts in our optical fiber those are core cladding and buffer jacket or outer jacket so what is a core what is a cladding and what is the outer jacket or buffer jacket now we can see core is the inner part of the optical fiber which is cylindrical material and which is made up of glass or plastic it is the major part in this optical fiber because of the total light or data can transfer or passing through this only core passing through this core and this core is having or core is surrounded by one more layer that is known as that is the layer is known as our cladding and which is also made up of glass or plastic but here condition is the cladding is having that the refractive indices or refractive index of this cladding is slightly lesser than that of our core material that means the refractive index of the core is higher than the refractive index of cladding and last one is buffer jacket it is the outer more layer it can protect protect the optical fiber from different cases in our atmosphere now we can see one by one what is the meaning of core and how it is exist what is the dimensions of this diameter and etc one by one first of all we can see this diagram in this one i was observing here three layers of optical fiber okay and in this one first one is core material and uh, which is central part of the optical fiber which is surrounded by one more layer that is known as cladding it is also surrounded by one more protection layer that is the buffer or outer jacket so the inner part or central part of the optical fiber is core that is having the diameter of 7 to 10 micrometers and uh, the core is a cylindrical rod of the dielectric material and light propagates mainly along this core of the fiber the core is generally made up of glass material and second one is cladding cladding layer is uh, surrounded to our core material and the core is surrounded by the layer of material called as cladding which is generally made up of glass or plastic the cladding layer is made of a dielectric material with refractive index is n2 so when we are considering the refractive index of the core is taken as n1 then the refractive index of the cladding is taken as n2 the index of refraction of this cladding material is always less than or slightly equal to that core that of refractive index of the core material these cladding performs the following functions first of all these are the cladding less loss of the light from the the core into the surrounding air and reduces scattering loss at the surface of the core and protects the fiber from the absorbing surface containments and adds mechanical strength that means the major uses of this cladding layer it is protecting the data that means without losing the data it can transfer the one end of the fiber to another end of the fiber and reducing scattering loss so when the instant rays otherwise when the light rays are interface instead and the interface of the core and cladding without scattering loss the data can be transferred from one end to another end at the same time it can protect the from the absorbing of surface every material having here absorption property that's why when we are going to send the data through this optical fiber the choices are there to absorb of some data by this material but this cladding is protecting the fiber from the absorbing surface or containments what are the absorbing uh, property that is removed by this our cladding material at the same time adds mechanical strength also so the cladding is giving some strength to our core that's why totally the fiber uh, optical fiber is getting full strength here 
and last one is buffer jacket that is the outer jacket or protection layer of the optical fiber is known as our buffer jacket so the coating or buffer is a layer of material used to protect an optical fiber from physical damage the material used for the buffer is the type of plastic always you are giving one major uh, protection layer of this optical fiber is our buffer jacket so the buffer jacket is protection to the optical fiber because of we are not giving any other equipment to protecting protection of this optical fiber so when you are using the optical fiber cables in our surroundings sometimes we are stretching that we are pulling that and we are holding that okay we are bending in this different cases the fiber optic cable is not damaging because of it is all actually having the protection layer with it that's why anywhere simply we are installing this optical fiber cables so that's why that is uh, giving us the fiber ja fiber jacket or buffer jacket is our giving us the protection to our optical fiber so these are different three layers in our optical fiber and that's why this is a construction of optical fiber in our structure of optical fiber just we have seen that first layer is core and second layer is cladding and third layer is buffer jacket core cladding jacket and these three are the major parts in our optical fiber in that the total data or light can transfer through this core material only which is our central part of optical fiber now we are going to see the what is the principle of optical fiber based on which principle our optical fiber is working the optical fiber carries light from one end to one other end of the fiber by the principle of total internal reflection okay that's why the working principle of the optical fiber is total internal reflection so what is the meaning of total internal reflection and how it is occurring and what are the conditions of this total internal reflection we can see one by one so before the total internal reflection we are going to see or we have recall that our basics of the ray optics those are reflection and refraction first of all we can see that reflection already we know that about this reflection how can define what is the reflection when the light rays are incident on the boundaries or barriers of a region this light bounces back the bouncing back of light rays when it is incident on the boundaries or barriers is known as our reflection so for example now we can see that it is our region okay the light ray is incident on this region with some angle so where it is incident at that point we have to draw a normal line which is perpendicular to our surface of incident then we are observing the small angle that means the first ray which is known as our incident ray and the incident ray is making some angle with our normal line n that is taken as theta i other simply it is known as i angle i angle i is the incident angle here when the light ray is incident on this boundary it is bounce back into same medium that second ray is known as our reflection ray that is r and the r also making some angle with the normal line that is r theta r otherwise angle r and here according to reflection law first law of reflection is always the angle of incident i equal to angle of reflection r what is the first law here when the light ray is incident on the boundary of medium or barrier of the medium it is bounce back so the bouncing back of the light is nothing but reflection so in this case the incident ray is making some angle with normal line the normal line which is to incident point on the surface and at the same time the reflection ray ray also making some angle with our normal line and these two angles always equal that's why the first law of reflection is angle of incident equal to angle of reflection then second law of reflection 
here we are observing three lines one is incident ray and second one is normal line and third one is reflection ray so the incident ray normal line and reflection ray these three are exist in same plane these three are exist in our same plane this is our second law of reflection the incident ray and normal line and the reflection ray these three are exist in our or three are lies in our same plane this is our second law of reflection so this is the first concept or first basic of ray optics is reflection simply that is bounce back of the light at the boundary of the region at the barrier of the region is known as our reflection concept but we are going to see that total internal reflection but here only we have seen that reflection so the difference is there between this reflection and the total internal reflection so before going to see that total internal reflection now we have to know that about the refraction concept also so what is the meaning of refraction now we can see in reflection we have taken only one medium or one region in that one light ray is passing and when it is incident on the boundary it bounces back that is reflection but here the case is two mediums when the light ray is passing from one medium to another medium the light is bending and travel at the boundary of two mediums so the bending of light the bending of light at the boundaries of two medium is known as our refraction concept what i am telling here simply when the light ray is passing from one medium to another medium at the boundaries of two medium the light ray is bending and travel so the property of bending of light at the boundaries of two mediums is known as our refraction so now we can see how it is possible refraction here the bending of light also two ways based on the mediums i told here when the light is passing from one medium to another medium but which type of mediums in our optics we are going to see here two types of mediums one is denser medium one is rarer medium how can define denser medium and rarer medium that is always depend on the refractive indices values of these mediums so we have to know now what is the meaning of refractive index refractive index is the property of a medium but how can define it is so refractive index of any medium is defined as that is a ratio of ratio of velocity of light in vacuum to the velocity of light in that medium velocity of light in vacuum to the velocity of light in medium that is known as refractive index of that particular medium so here mu equal to c by v you are writing so c is the velocity of light in vacuum and always that value what is the value my earth 3 c equal to 3 into 10 to the power of 8 meter per second and v is the velocity of light in that particular medium for example you can take here air air medium is there so mu air that means refractive index of the air that equal to c by v c and v of air so velocity of light in air medium also it is nearly or approximately equal to the velocity of light in vacuum that's why here c and v values both are same so 3 into 10 to the power of 8 and it is also 3 into 10 to the power of 8 both will be cancel so you will get here only 1 so mu air equal to 1 that means what the refractive index of air medium equal to 1 okay but compared to with other medium for example you can take it is water so mu of water refractive index of the water equal to c by v of water here the velocity of light in vacuum is always constant that is 3 into the power of 8 meter per second but velocity of light in water is different it is nearly 2.5 meter per second so 3 by 2.5 meter per 3 2.5 into 10 to the power of 8 meter per second so 10 to the power of 8 10 to the power of 8 cancel so 3 by 2.5 it is nearly equal to 1.3 that means the refractive index of the water is 1.3 same like if you take the glass the refractive index of the glass is you will get 1.5 it is 3 to the power of 8 meter per second by the velocity of light in glass is 2 to the power of 8 meter per second 3 by 2 it is equal to 1.5 
So now we can observe the refractive index of air is 1, the refractive index of water is 1.3, the refractive index of glass is 1.5. But I am coming to tell you what is the meaning of denser medium and rarer medium, right? So if you take air and uh, water, air and uh, water, in these two mediums, the air having refractive index is only 1, the water is having 1.3. So, which is more here? The 1.3 is more. That's why the water is having more refractive index than air medium. That's why the water is known as denser medium. Air is known as rarer medium. Clear? If you take that water and glass, water and glass. In these two cases, what you can observe? The glass having refractive index as 1.3 only and the glass is having 1.5. In this, glass having more refractive index than water that's why the glass is denser medium and water is the rarer medium so now we got one idea about the denser medium and rarer medium so in between two mediums which medium having more refractive index that is known as our denser medium and which medium having less refractive index that is optically known as rarer medium so this is about the our denser and rarer medium but our point is Refraction means we have taken that when we can say that refraction means the light rays are passing from one medium to another medium either rarer to denser or denser to rarer based on these mediums the refracted rays are going in two different ways that's why the refraction concept occurring here two ways one week once you can see that see here refraction in two different ways first case we can take that from rarer medium to denser medium rarer medium to denser medium so which is our boundaries of two mediums which is our rarer medium and which is denser medium the light rays passing from rarer to denser so what we have discussed that the light is bending and travel at the boundaries of two medium according to that according to refraction phenomena here also the light is bending and travel the but bending is different ways based on the mediums from from which medium to which medium that's why here before that at instant point on this interface you can take one normal line normal to the interface now we are observing it, it is instant ray i and the instant ray is making some angle with uh, that normal line that is instant angle i or theta i now we are taking that the ray is passing from the rarer medium to denser medium in this case the light ray is bending towards normal bending towards normal in this diagram we are observing actual path of the light which in case of with no boundaries between these two mediums actual path of this ray is like this i am denoted by dots but it is not following that path because of it is crossing the boundary Okay, that's why the light is bending and travel, but bending also which which way it is away from normal or towards normal that is based on the mediums. So when it is coming from the rarer medium to denser medium, the light ray is bending and travel towards normal. Is it right? So in second case, what is that? Denser to rarer. Denser to rarer. So denser means what here? That is having more refractive index than that of rarer medium right so here also it is between boundary two medium boundary between two mediums and here also one right ray is passing from the denser medium to rarer medium denser medium to rarer medium so again we are taking that one normal line at instant point that is n that is making angle theta instant rays i so here also you can observe the light can bend and travel but here it is coming from the denser to rarer okay that's why the bending light otherwise the refraction ray can going away from the normal actual path of the light is like this okay but that light is not going in this direction that's why it is bending and travel away from the normal so here also the angle between normal line to the refracted ray r is known as our angle r which is known as our refraction angle so in these two cases we are observing here 
in first case the ray is coming from the rarer to denser medium the angle is instant angle is i instant ray is i okay angle i right at same time here also you are observing the bending light or the bending ray is known as our refracted ray it is making angle theta r and that is known as refracted angle at same time the line is known as the ray is known as our refraction ray in second case we are observing the light ray is coming from the denser medium to rarer medium and which is known as instant ray and which is making angle theta i theta i is the instant angle here which is between instant ray and normal line at same time the bending light is known as refraction ray and this refracted ray also making some angle with our normal line that is taken as theta r it is known as refracted angle in this case we are observing always the refracted angle theta r is greater than theta i but from these two cases which is prefer or which is uh, supporting to our total internal reference concept only we can follow the second case when the light ray is passing from the denser medium to rarer medium then only we can get the total internal reflection how it is now we can see okay so in these two cases we are observing now i am talking about only second case what is second case here that is a the light rays are passing from denser medium to rarer medium right in this case the light ray can bend and travel away from the normal line right so in this case how the angles are changing how it is changing the refracted angle now we can see at first case only the concept is the light rays are passing from the denser medium to rarer medium and in that different cases we can observe it is a boundary of two mediums okay the refractive index of the denser medium is n1 and uh, refract uh, the refractive index of the rarer medium is n2 that means n1 and n2 are the refractive indices of two mediums and it is a boundary right now the light ray is coming from the denser medium to rarer medium where it is incident at incident point you can take one normal line to the surface or interface and now we are getting the small angle i i is the incident angle and capital i is the incident ray right it is from denser to rarer that's why the refracted ray going away from the normal that's why actual path is like this but the light ray is bending and travel away from the normal away from the normal so the angle between normal line to the our refracted ray capital r that is the angle between normal line to the refracted ray is taken as theta r okay or simply r so here theta r is always depend on theta i otherwise r is depend on i in this case i is some angle then r also we have gotting like that in second case i am increasing that incident angle increasing that incident angle so r also increases r also increases if i will be increase r also increases like that if you going to increase and increase and increase at certain case we can observe that if we can observe that for incident angle i the refracted angle is going to 90 degrees by increasing of r by increasing of i r r also increases but up to here by increasing of continuously increasing the i value at certain value of incident angle the refracted angle is 90 degrees what is the meaning of that in this case the refracted ray is coincide with the boundaries of two medium in this case you are observing the refracted ray is coincide with the boundaries of medium in this case in this particular case the incident angle is known as our critical angle what is it ma critical angle right so that means what for which angle of incident the critical for which angle of incident the refracted angle is equal to 90 degrees that is known as our 
critical angle. Otherwise, for angle of incident, for which angle of incident, the refracted rays coincide with boundaries. It is known as our critical angle. So up to here, we have seen that incident angle, refracted angle, and normal line and boundary. At same time, we have got that critical angle also. If in case, if in case, if you increase the angle of incident more than critical angle, then what will happen? Now we can see. So how can define our critical angle? That is when the angle of incidence is increased, angle of refraction. So increases and the stage is created or reached that refracted ray just coincide with the boundaries of two mediums. So for which angle of incident, the refracted rays coincide with boundaries. In that case, the incident angle is known as our critical angle. So at same time, the critical angle is giving us the refracted angle as 90 degrees, right? So generally, you can simply, you can see that the critical angle is denoted by theta c. And in that case, the refracted angle is 90 degrees, 90 degrees. So if the angle of incident, if the angle of incident furtherly increase more than critical angle, then the refracted angle also, it is increases more than 90 degrees. In that case, what is happening already in the critical case, in the critical angle case, the refracted ray is coincide with boundary. If in case more than 90 means what the light ray is crossing the boundary and again it is coming to same medium. So that phenomenon is known as our total internal reflection. Right. So before that, we are going to see that refraction law or Snell's law. According to Snell's law, what you can write or what is the concept here in first medium, the refractive index is N1. The second medium, the refractive index is taken as N2. According to Snell's law or, or according to our refraction law, we can take as N1 sin theta 1 equal to N2 sin theta 2. From this one, we can write sin theta 1 equal to N2 by N1 sin theta 2. Right? First of all, N1 sin theta 1 equal to N2 sin theta 2. N1 sin theta 1 equal to N2 sin theta 2. So from this one, you can write sin theta 1 equal to N2 by N1 into sin theta 2. So in this case, so when theta 1 means what here? Incident angle. When the incident angle is going to critical angle, that means theta 1 is going to theta C. Then what is happening? The theta 2 is equal to 90 degrees. Right? So when the incident angle is equal to critical angle, then the refracted angle equal to 90 degrees. These two conditions you can apply in above condition. What is it my here? That is sin theta c equal to you can get n2 by n1 into sin 90 into sin 90. Right? So here sin theta c equal to n2 by n1 into sin 90. Sin 90 equal to 1. That's why it is equal to n2 by n1 only. So sin theta c equal to n2 by n1. So we want to only find out T, T, TC value. TC means what? Critical angle. So theta c equal to sin inverse of n2 by n1. This is our formula for critical angle. What are you doing here? According to refraction, refraction law or Snell's law, n1 sin theta 1 equal to n2 sin theta 2. n1 is the refractive index of first medium and theta 1 also the angle in the first medium. That is nothing but incident angle. Right and n2 is the refractive and index of the second medium or error medium and theta 2 also the angle in the second medium other than I known as their refracted angle. So you can write simply n1 sin theta 1 equal to n2 sin theta 2. Here the, when the theta 1 is going to theta c then automatically the theta 2 goes to 90 degrees. That's why theta c and 90 we can write in a bow equation then automatically you can get here n1 sin theta c equal to n2 sin 90. But sin 90 equal to 1. That's why sin theta c equal to n2 by n1. Right? Theta c equal to sin inverse of n2 by n1. So that is the critical angle. So from this equation, completely the critical angle is depend on the refractive indices of the two mediums, denser and ray medium. So this is the concept of refraction and refraction law. Now we can see, now we are going to see that the principle of optical fiber. What is the principle of optical fiber? Already we have discussed that 
total internal reflection so up to here we have reached that critical angle so then furtherly if you increase if you increase the critical angle then what is happening now we can see that is principle of optical fiber total internal reflection total internal reflection how it is occurring now you can see when it is instant angle is equal to critical angle this is instant ray and uh, it is theta c you are observing here when it is equal to instant angle equal to critical angle then the refracted ray is coincide with boundaries then the refracted angle is equal to 90 degrees if if you increase that instant angle more than critical angle then what is happening here the theta c otherwise i is instant angle that is more than theta c then the refracted ray is coming to the same medium because of the angle of refraction also more than 90 degrees more than 90 degrees you can observe more than 90 means it is the ray is coming to the same medium or same region so the instant ray is instant with some angle which is more than critical angle then the light ray is coming to the same medium that's why this phenomenon is known as our total internal reflection so how can you define here when the light ray is passing from denser medium to rarer medium and if the incident angle is more than critical angle then the light ray is coming to the same medium this phenomenon is known as our total internal reflection total internal reflection so based on this principle our optical fiber is working here so we have seen that already optical fiber structure what is that core cladding buffer jacket in this case where it is occurring the tir or total reflection we can see so between the core and cladding between the core and cladding interface the total internal reflection will be exist that means here the core is behave like our denser medium and cladding is our rarer medium so that's why we already told that the core material having the more refractive index than the refractive index of the cladding so like that we can manufacture our optical fiber at the interface of core and cladding we are getting that total internal reference concept so when you are going to see that once you can observe this diagram in this one first case that is the theta i is the less than theta c in that case we are getting refracted ray into the our ray medium and here t r also other theta r also more than theta i in second case we are observing that is second case is this one and here you are observing here the theta equal to theta c that means theta i equal to theta c in that case we are observing that is the refracted rays coincide with boundaries and the angle is equal to 90 degrees that is known as our critical angle and third case the instant angle is more than critical angle instant angle is more than critical angle that's why the light ray is coming to the same medium the refracted angle also more than 90 degrees so in these three cases we are of clearly observing so in this n1 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 and the three cases the n1 is the refractive index of the denser medium otherwise in our optical fiber that is the refractive index of the core medium and n2 is the refractive index of the cladding medium okay that's why based on this we are getting the transfer the data from one end of the fiber to another end of the fiber now we can observe in our optical fiber case in our optical fiber case what is that first medium is our core medium which is a core and which is surrounded by one more layer that is taken as cladding so the refractive index of the core is n1 the refractive index of the cladding is n2 it is core n1 and cladding n2 first of all we are launching the data otherwise we are sending the data from out of the fiber that means generally we can take that air medium so here air medium is there 
So we are sending the data from air medium to core medium with some angle of incident at the interface of core or interface of the optical fiber. It, at this position, we are not getting any total internal reflection. Only we can observe here that is the refraction concept because the core medium is made up of glass or plastic, right? That means it is having some more refractive index than air medium. So it is our principal axis like this you can take and here the alpha otherwise theta angle is the incident angle but here incident ray is i when it is entered into the core medium that means the ray is going from the rarer medium to denser medium when it is from rarer to denser what we can observe the refracted ray is towards normal towards normal that only we can observe here refraction concept but after that the ray can propagate through this core medium and again it is incident on the interface of the two mediums of core and cladding at this interface we are getting total internal reflection because of at this point we are taking one normal line and you also can observe one more theta or angle it is more than critical angle like that we can manufacture this optical fiber and with the alpha is helpful to getting theta is theta i is more than theta c and according to this one the ray is completely coming to back into the core medium that means when the light ray is instant on the at the surface of core and cladding it is coming to back into the core medium by the total internal reflection it is one tir and at same time it is coming to second end of the core again it will be reach that boundary of core and cladding again it is bounced back by tir like that continuously number of tir phenomena are exist finally we can reach that second end of the fiber that means what you are sending the data here at the first end of the fiber that can reach the second end of the fiber that is the principle of our optical fiber so simply the principle working principle of optical fiber is our total internal reflection in this diagram we can observe once when a light ray traveling from an optically denser medium into optically rarer medium is incident at an angle greater than the critical angle then the ray is totally reflected back into the same medium so by obeying the laws of reflection so this phenomenon is known as our total internal reflection so in this diagram we are observing here the inner part is our core medium and uh, the outer layer is our cladding slightly we are differentiating with some color right and the number of light rays are enter into the optical fiber and those are propagating like this at the interface of the core and cladding these light rays are bouncing back otherwise coming to the back and uh, up to like that up to like this number of total internal reflections we are reaching the second end of the optical fiber so that's why that is the principle of optical fiber so finally today we have discussed the optical fiber so optical fiber is a long thin dielectric material which can transfer the data from one place to another place without loss right and uh, the construction of optical fiber in that we have seen that it is having three parts majorly core cladding and buffer jacket and finally we have discussed about the the working principle of optical fiber the optical fiber is working based on the total internal reflection concept. At the same time, the major thing here, the conditions for TIR we got. What the conditions for first one is compulsory, the light ray must be passing from denser medium to rarer medium. That is first condition. And second condition, what is that? The instant angle is must be greater than critical angle. Due to these two conditions, we are getting total internal reflection phenomena. Due to this phenomena, we are getting the optical fiber is working. That's why the working principle of optical fiber is our total internal reflection. Right. Next, we are going to see that uh, acceptance angle and uh, acceptance cone and numerical aperture of optical fiber in next class. Thank you. Like, share, and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.